All right. Thank you so much for being here. I'm here with Chelsea Joe, and she's going to tell us a little bit about her business and what she does and how she helps moms. So thank you so much for being here, Chelsea Joe. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to talk all things mom and business and systems and, and just getting it all together. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely need a few systems in my life. I actually just just, just reorganized my um, desk and I realized how much that really helped my mental space to just get organized and, and not feel like my desk was keeping me back from actually working. So I'm really excited to have you here today. Um, so can you tell us your story, who you are, why you're here right now talking with me and yeah, just a little bit more about that. Yeah, for sure. So I am a mom to two girls. I have an eight-year-old and a three-year-old and I came into, uh, I'm the owner of ChelseaJoe.co. And so I have an academy where I teach systems to women that are trying to be successful in motherhood, in their home, in their business, and in their marriage without feeling like they're pulled in all directions all the time. And I didn't grow up thinking, hey, that's what I'm going to do. I mean, we didn't even really have the internet. So of course I didn't think that, right? Um, but I have been a professional sign language interpreter. That's what I went to college for. That's what I did for 15 years. Um, and in the midst of that, I got into a place where I had made some decisions and I had allowed myself to be into in a, in a really horrible relationship. And I became a single mom out of that. And um, in, in the real trenches of that, I always had this creative outlet and I created an event-based business with my mom to really lift my spirits and help me get through probably one of the hardest times in my life. And through that, I really learned what my entrepreneurial spirit looks like and how much I absolutely love it. My career as a sign language interpreter was at the top of what it could be. And I was picking and making my own hours and it really allowed me to build this business. Well, then I was single and I, and I really healed myself. I worked on myself and what I needed to do. And shortly thereafter, my husband just like fell into my lap. Basically we got married very quickly and then we had another little girl. And so I, he's a fireman. And so we had this rotating schedule and everything was just really chaotic in that time of juggling my event-based business and interpreting and having a newborn and my daughter that I was a single parent to was going back and forth between our house and their house. And then my husband's rotating schedule, plus keeping house, plus making a new family. Like it was just really hard. And I had a lot of people asking me, how are you doing this so well? And I'm like, I'm, I am, I don't know. <laughs> and I realized throughout that process that my Tetris like mind that really strives to have the world fit together in, in puzzle pieces without negative space where everything is super efficient and everything makes sense and it helps you get from point A to point B in the most effective way possible was doing that with all of these conflicts that I was having juggling all of these balls and I was coming up with some some systems that were pretty awesome. They were really helping. They were really working. Mm -hmm. And I desired to be home more often. And I got turned on to this idea that I could run a business from home. And it just was spoken very loud and clear to me. And so I hosted a workshop at, locally and that was the end of it. And then I started a podcast and like, now I'm here. I thought I was going to be a blogger and, and then, you know, now I'm running this academy that's like incredible. And I, I don't even, sometimes things happen when we just follow our hearts and we get the tools that we need and we systemize our lives, which is what I do, you know, and we get out of our own way and we start getting really efficient. Um, that's what I realized. And that's what I teach. Wow. That is an incredible gift. My mind is not a Tetris like mine. <laughs> I, so I think that is just, first of all, I love that you followed your heart and you followed whatever was calling you to do this and to serve your clients in your Academy. That is just so cool. I mean, a lot of us maybe hear it and we just kind of put it aside and we don't actually follow it. And so that's really neat that you did that, but also that you're finding ways that like me, I don't know think I would even think of systems for my daily activities. I wouldn't even know where to start. 
And I can imagine that it's a huge solution for your clients and for your students. So, so tell us a little bit more about the Academy and like what exactly that is and what does that mean? Yeah. Okay. So the funny thing is, is that when I started this whole thing, I just was going to teach moms how to create systems in their home, in their motherhood. And I did that. But at the same time, I was running my business and people were like, but how are you doing this in your business in such a short amount of time? So then that fell in the mix. And then moms were like, but help, I need help cleaning my house. I can't keep up. Everything's exploding everywhere. I can't keep up. And so then that came into the mix. And then there's this other thing too, on really truly being a team with your husband and how that impacts what we do as mothers and how, what I like to say is how we run our ship. And that is basically what the Academy is. So it's, there's four tiers to it. We dive into productivity and motherhood. Then we dive into systems in our business. Then we go through the whole entire house on how to organize it, how to set up cleaning routines, um, where I talk pretty heavily about how to simplify that, not only in terms of just how to keep your cleaning simple, but how to keep your products really simple. I'm such a huge advocate for just clean living in general and simplifying it even down to the products that we put on our bodies and what we put in our mouths and what we put in our minds and our hearts. So that's a big component of it. And then we talk in the fourth tier quite a bit about communication and how we as women, uh, have a duty to be a leader of our own communication and what that looks like when we're running our domain with these children Mm -hmm. all day long and 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 what that translates into with our spouses and how we can become a really well-oiled machine and a full team with our kids with our spouses and all of that really surrounds itself around communication so Mm -hmm. that's 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 it in a nutshell there's four four big kind of tears that we go through and and then they're done. Wow. That is really cool. Um, I especially like the minimalist with the cleaning and being very living a a clean life as far as products and stuff, as you know, um, a lot of my listeners are here because of that, because that's, that's what I talk about a lot in toxic free talk. So that is really cool. So, um, in your podcast, like what do you cover in your podcast? Yeah. The biggest thing that for everyone that's listening and where I want every woman to start, every mom to start is with this thing that I call the fundamental needs. So I have this thing that I teach. It's what really started out the podcast and it's been the lifeline of everything that I do. Um, and it's, if you, if you want to think about it in a term that makes sense to most of us now, it's sustainable self-care. And so what I aim to do and what I aim to talk about in the podcast is everything that's in the academy, basically, but really the foundation of everything is making sure that we are filling up our cups and learning to serve from that place instead of serving to the point to where we're so depleted that then we're either not living out the lives that we were called to in the name of being a good mother, which then in turn, we resent all the way through. And this is the system that puts all of that to rest. And so my sustainable self-care system, um, I have a completely free workbook for people to go through to help them determine what their fundamental needs are, how to get them in the calendar, how to time block their week so that there's enough time to do the things that you need to do. You know where your cleaning is going to live. You know where your time with your kids is going to live. You know where your time for your business is going to live. You know where your time for your marriage and your friends and your whatever activities you need to do. You know where it all lives and you can be very, very present and intentional in every moment. And so when, when we begin to build really busy schedules, we forget about taking care of us. And so the fundamental needs, the sustainable self-care system that I teach is the foundation of building your schedule. Everything goes on top of that. So it's not left to be at the very, very end. And it's very preventative. It's not this reactionary, oh, I need to schedule to get my nails done. Oh, I need to schedule a bath. It's not that at all. For me as a, as a wife and as a mother and a, and a home caretaker, a fundamental need for me is cleaning my house every week. If I, my house is not clean, I'm a mess, right? So that's one of my fundamental needs. I get two hours on the calendar every single week that I've pour into my house and I don't do it alone. I, I'm a very big advocate for like, raise your hand and say, I need help because you, we do need help. Right. So that is, 
that's that's my that's my that's the big thing that I want everybody to walk away understanding and knowing after they've come in contact with me and my community. Yeah. I love that. I, um, I think that if I prioritize cleaning my house, I would be a lot happier because I, I get mad that I have to clean it. I, I don't love cleaning my house. I mean, I love it when it's clean, but I don't love doing it. And I often am thinking I should be doing something more important right now, but if I had it scheduled, then I wouldn't be upset that I was wanting to be using that time for something else. So I think I might need to take your class <laughs> to figure out my <laughs> fundamentals, but we will include a link to your podcast. What's the name of your podcast again? Systemize your life. Systemize your life. Love that name. Okay. So we'll include a link to the podcast and also to your, um, your cheat sheet that you have. Is that what yeah. you call it? I missed it. Yeah. It's just, it's a workbook, workbook. and it's, and it's totally, there's so many podcast episodes that talk about it. And then there's tons of women inside of my Facebook group that are like just going crazy over getting their fundamental needs set up and then diving even deeper into their time blocks and all that kind of stuff. And my group inside of Facebook is super supportive. I'm always in there helping moms try and wrap their brains around what's the next step for them and how do they make this work. But I did recently just do a podcast episode on how I get my cleaning done. I've broken my house up into zones so that I know exactly every single week of the month what I'm tackling because of that feeling that you just described and how we hate it, but we love it when it's done. So simplifying and systemizing that makes it just something that you do and then you're done. Okay. Well, I'm definitely going to go listen to that right away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw this image that I actually ended up sharing on Facebook and it, it's like a mom who's like totally stressed out. And it says, why does the chaos of your home add to your anxiety? And it just was like talking about all these different things. And I feel that my house right now is, it looks like a bomb went off and I just, you get to a point sometimes you don't even know where to start. Mm -hmm. And then if it's all messy, then how do you even start actually cleaning? And it's just, it's a cycle and we're home all the time now. Yeah. And so even though my kids don't play with little toys and there aren't toys all over the floor, there is still like a socks and a sweatshirt and just, they don't pick up after themselves, no matter how much they get nagged by me. So they're wonderful kids, but you know, they still need reminders. Of course. Yeah. No, we, I've been tackling this so much lately in the podcast. You won't have to go back very far to hear all these episodes. There's so much to say about that. And there really is a system. It's so funny. Like I can't not talk about systems. It just comes out of me so naturally, but there really is a system that, that I use to help with that. My three-year-old and my eight-year-old, my eight-year-old's pretty good at it. My three-year-old needs a lot of hand over hand with it, but um, they're definitely walking in the path of knowing like everything in our house has a home. And by the end of the day, and it's not even the end of the day, when we're done with it, we have to put it back. Um, I follow the Montessori philosophy a lot with how I create space for my kids and how I parent them, what our discipline looks like, what their learning looks like. And that's a, that's a big proponent to them. So, yeah, well, that's really cool. Um, is there any like technology that you use to help you track your systems? Yeah. Yeah. I use a task management software for my business. The technology that I use for, for systemizing and tracking my motherhood and my home is a good old fashioned paper planner. I use a hybrid system of both. I don't combine them into one space because it gets messy. And when things become messy, our brains just don't want to do it. It has to be very simple for us to take action. And so my task, the task management software that I use is called Meister Task. Dot com, which is very similar to Asana or Trello or Monday.com. All of those are task management software programs. That's what I choose to use in my business. It's a workflow. So when my work block comes up and I know I'm working from 12 to four on this specific day, I open up my task management software, meistertask.com. I've preloaded it. It says Monday, this task you're doing, I do it and then I'm done and I leave. And I'm like, I'm done. So I show up to work, I clock in, I clock out and I go back to my family and it's really cool. <laughs> my paper planner, I just time block in it. Yeah. You know, I have my time block set up and yeah. 
I use both too. I, I, I've been using Trello and I have not figured out how to set up like a Monday task, Tuesday task, Wednesday task, but I need, maybe I will try this other one that you're, oh, my what? <laughs> it's meistertask.com. Meistertask.com. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go search that up and see. And then for my planner, I, I like to just be able to write things in it, mm-hmm. you know? So I definitely like to add that and block my, my, my time. And then I usually have like three major tasks for each day that have to get done. Um, so I don't feel like my to-do list is overwhelming, but yeah. well, that's awesome. Is there anything else? Um, how can people work with you? Actually, let's throw that question. How can people work with you um, besides your academy and your podcast and stuff? And the best way to get connected with me is through my Facebook group. So it's just systemize your life on Facebook. That's the best way to get immediate access to all of the questions that you might have for me. Um, I am currently not doing one-to-one coaching for students that haven't gone through the academy because everything that I could possibly tell you and the foundation that you need is inside of the academy. And I ended up spending the last year teaching one-to-one to to every single student what was in the academy as I was building it. And so now it's, it's available for anyone and for everyone and they don't have to wait for the time slot and they don't have to pay extraordinarily large amounts of money to work with me one-on-one. I do work one-on-one with clients that already have the foundations and they know the language, they know the lingo, and they just need me to come in and give them something very specific and specialized in their life. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's so many free options. Eat it up on the podcast, go into the Facebook group. I, I, I hang out on Instagram. Um, I'm there in the DMs. Mm-hmm. You can shoot me a message there anytime. And then whenever you're super serious about diving in, the program's always available. Awesome. Um, do you have any closing thoughts or anything else you want to share? Um, I don't know. I think that I probably would just leave all your listeners with asking all of you that are listening that if there's like a little voice that that is telling you that something's not working, don't ignore it. Because my biggest philosophy that I live by in my marriage is it doesn't go away if you sleep on it. It just doesn't. It gets worse and it gets harder to deal with and harder to deal with and harder to deal with. If you don't know what the answer is, ask someone, find someone, look on Facebook, wherever that happens to be. If it's not me, who's your mentor? Just start asking questions. Don't ignore it. A lot of times I think moms just ignore for two reasons. One, because they know it's going to be a whole lot of work and they're already overwhelmed. And secondly, because they don't want to be judged. They don't want to air their dirty laundry, uh, but it doesn't ever end up getting any better. So if there's something that's speaking to you that you feel like really needs to be worked on and it needs to have attention given to it, write it down, speak it out, start talking about it, do something, anything about it. That's good. That's really helpful information. Yeah. I think that's, I think there's a lot of points in my life where I didn't listen and I, you know, maybe shoved something under the rug a little bit too long and I could have just asked for help and I would have been over it a lot quicker. So thank you for that. All right, so we are heading into 2021 and most people are just so excited to have 2020 (laughs) behind us. Is there anything that you would like to share about, um, you know, just thinking about last year or the current year we're into and where we're going tomorrow very soon? Yeah, there's something interesting about coming from a really low place and the The good news is, is that when you come from a really low place, there's always somewhere to go up. But the most important thing to remember is that there's, everybody says this all the time, there's two sides to every single coin, right? But there really are two ways to go about this. And so no matter how you went about 2020 and handling the pandemic, I want you to really think about creating a time, sit down and find a time for yourself either just before we go into the new year or in just like the week or so after 
give yourself at least two hours, if not a whole day to sit and ask yourself, what do I want to do with this year coming up? It doesn't matter how hard the year has been. It doesn't matter what you feel like you lost out on. Scrap it, start over, start from wherever you are and figure out what's the next thing for me. And if it's really big, great, write a really big audacious goal down and then break it down into little teeny tiny chunks into, into chunks that can work every quarter. And then every quarter, break that down into what you're going to do every week. And don't get overwhelmed by what do I do next? Because it's just one step in front of the other. Allow yourself to dream, allow yourself to make plans, even if it doesn't go according to plan. We all know what that feels like at this point. But I would just say it's to, to let, give yourself time and space between now and, and the first few days after the new year to allow yourself to really put some, some goals down for yourself for the upcoming year. Yeah, that is really great idea. And I will definitely be doing that. I think I want to do that with my whole family too. ask yes. my daughters what their goals are for next year and my husband and our family goals. We usually have like goals of traveling and going new places, which has obviously been put on hold, but it'll be nice to dream again about 2021 and all that will happen. So that's awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to share everything um, on my podcast in the show notes and on my um, webpage. And thank you so much for being here. It's been really fun. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye.